Artificial Neural Networks Algorithm, is a game-changer, in the world of AI. Complex problems such as image classification, recommendation systems, and language-to-language -language translation, have been solved with this technique. In last my video, we covered, how to work ANNs. In this video, we will learn how to implement ANNs algorithm, for machine learning tasks with scikit-learn. First, let's discuss, how to perform regression analysis, with the ANN algorithm. Regression is used, when the output variable, is a numeric value, such as salary or age. In this analysis, we want to predict a numerical value. So, the output of our neural network, should be a neuron. Note that, if you tackle a multivariate regression problem, you add neurons, by the number of dimensions. For example, to find the center of an object in an image, you need to predict, a two-dimensional coordinate system. So, you need to place two neurons, in the output layer. To solve the regression problem, we're going to use, the MLP regressor class in scikit-learn. To show this, let's use the California housing dataset. This dataset includes house prices. Our goal is to build a model, that will predict the price of a house, based on its features. To load easily this dataset, we can call the fetch California housing function. First, let's import this function. Let me write, from, sklearn, datasets, import. Let me type, fetch California housing. Cool, we imported the function. Let's assign this dataset to a variable, using this function. Let me write, housing, equals, let me set, fetch California housing. Nice, we loaded the dataset. Now, let's split the dataset into, training and test sets. Note that, the model is built, with the training set. The model is evaluated, with the test set. To do this, let's use the train test split function. First, let's import this function. Let me write, from, sklearn, model selection, import, let me type, train test split. Nice, we imported the function. Let's go ahead, and split our dataset, with this function. Let me write, x train full, x test, y train full, y test, equals, let me type, train test split. Next, let me set the input data, housing.data. And then let me type output data, housing.target. To fix the randomness, let's use the random state parameter, random state. Let me set, 42. Great, we split our dataset. Now, let's create the validation data, to fine tune the parameters of the model. For this, let's use the train test split function again. Let me write, x train, x valid, y train, y valid, equals, train test split. After that, let me set, the training input, x train full, and then let's give, the output, y train full. Again, let's use the random state parameter to fix the randomness, random state, equals, 42. Awesome, we have created our datasets. Now, let's build our model. For this, let's import the MLP regressor class. Let me write, from, sklearn, neural network, import, let me type, MLP regressor. Great, we imported the MLP regressor class. After that, let's take an example from this class. Let's write, MLP reg, equals, MLP regressor. Now, let's determine the number of hidden layers, and the number of neurons in each layer. To do this, let me use 3 layers, and 50 neurons in each layer. Let me write, hidden layer sizes, equals, 50, 50, 50. Lastly, let me write, random state, equals, 42. Great, we created an example for our model. The dataset consists of numeric values. Let's standardize these numerical values. So, we build our model more accurately, and faster. For this, let's import the standard scalar class. Let me write, from, sklearn, preprocessing, import, let me set, standard scalar. Let's use a pipeline to make scaling, and model building easier. First, let's import the make pipeline function. Let me write, from, sklearn, pipeline, import, make pipeline. Nice, we imported the function. Now, let's build a pipeline, with this function. Let me write, pipeline, equals, make pipeline. After that, let's write the scaling function, standard scalar. Finally, let's write our model, MLP reg. With this pipeline, first, the data will be scaled, and then the model will be built. We've built an awesome pipeline. Now, let's call the fit method, and train our model. Let me write, pipeline, let's call, fit function. Next, let's use the training data for model training, let me set, x train, and y train. Cool, we trained our model. 
Now, let's predict the validation data using this model. Let me write ypred equals pipeline predict. Let's write the validation data set x valid. Great, we predicted the validation data. Now, let's find the prediction error of this model with the mean squared error function. First, let's import this function. Let me write from sklearn metrics import let me type mean squared error. Nice, we imported the function. Now, let's find the prediction error using this function. Let me write reams equals mean squared error. Let's write the real values first, y valid. Next, let's write the prediction values, y pred, and then let me set squared equals false. Let's see the value of this metric. Let me write reams. The mean squares error of the model is around 0.5. This value is not bad. Note that, if your data set has a lot of outliers, you can also use the mean absolute error metric. We did not use an activation function in the output layer while building this model. You can also use ReLU as an activation function if you want. Since this problem is simple, I used the scikit-learn library to build the neural network. In the next video, we will use Keras for more complex architectures. At this point, you may ask how to find optimum parameters for your regression problem. Let's take a look at which hyperparameters value you can use. For the hidden layer, you can use 1 to 5 layers, depending on your problem. You can set values from 10 to 100 as the number of neurons per hidden layer. You can determine the number of neurons in the output layer by the number of dimensions. You can use ReLU as an activation function in hidden layers. For the activation function in the output layer, you can either not use it, or you can use ReLU, Sigmoid, or TAN. For the loss function, you can use the mean squared error metric, as we did. Okay, we have seen how to build a simple neural network for regression. You can also use the multilayer perceptron for classification tasks. For example, for the binary classification problem, you can add a neuron for a single output with the sigmoid function in the last layer. Since we passed the sigmoid function in the last layer, the output will be between 0 and 1. It will predict the positive class if it is greater than a certain threshold value and the negative class if it is less. You can also use the multilayer perceptron architecture for multi-class problems. For this, you add as many neurons as the number of classes to the last layer. For example, for digit classification, you place 10 neurons in the last layer. In this problem, only one class is predicted, unlike the multi-label classification. So, since one neuron is placed per class, softmax is used in the last layer as the activation function. All predictions of this function are between 0 and 1, and the sum of these estimates is 1. Cool, you learned how to tackle the multi-label classification problem. Let's go ahead and how to implement ANN's algorithm with scikit-learn. To execute multi-layer perceptron in a classification problem, you can use MLP classifier class in scikit-learn. You can use this class like the regression we performed. Let's discuss the hyperparameters you can use when building a model for the multi-category classification problem. The number of hidden layers can be from 1 to 5, depending on your problem. For the number of output neurons, you can write one neuron per category. For two multi-label classifications, you can use one per label and sigmoid as the activation function. Nice, we've seen the hyperparameters you can use. That's it. Thanks for watching. In this video, we explored how to implement the ANN's algorithm for the regression and classification tasks. I hope you enjoy it. In the next video, we will explore how to implement multi-layer perceptrons with Keras.